So welcome to this uh, second part of our getting started with MemoQ video. And in uh, this part, we'll be looking more at uh, how those uh, translation sessions go and uh, what you can use and what you can do. So now we have created a project in the previous video and we have set up our translation memory and our uh, term base or glossary. So let's uh, get started and say I want to translate this document. I double click on it and it opens. On the very top, you can see here a microphone. Uh, in MemoQ, you have the option to connect a dedicated app to be able to translate and use voice typing and it works only on ios uh, devices so ipad and iphones so if you use one and you want to uh, use this functionality well that's that's where it starts and that's how you do it now this is the layout that you get uh, when you use memoq uh, for the first time so you have here your source on the left and your target on the right you have underneath here the view pane so while you're translating it will show you this if you are reviewing then you will see uh, something else um, and as you see well it is two ways so uh, this here means that i am in this segment and if i go uh, let's say further it will show me where am i in the document and the contrary happens also say if i click here on translation memory software well it brings me back to that uh, segment on the right hand side here are my translation results okay so let's say i decide to translate uh, this uh, segment okay memoir de, de traduction in french so what i want to do now is confirm uh, the segment and go to the next one to do that, you type control enter. Okay, so that takes that into the translation memory. Okay, so I know this document. So if I go to segment 70, I see here that uh, it's already been translated. So it does auto propagate. Okay, so when you are translating, uh, repetitions will be automatically uh, translated as you see here and if I click in that segment now I see that on the right hand side I have suggestions here mémoire de traduction okay so and it gives me 100% match okay uh, now what I want to do maybe is add this to my glossary so I select both sides and click on add term which is also control E. Okay, so now this term is here. Okay, and I can click on OK and it will be added. So now when I am in that segment here, I can see that it is also suggested as a recognized term. So let's go back to the beginning. Okay, let's say I go to this segment here. Uh, and I will have uh, this match here presented to me and I have here this term presented to me so I can double click and it will insert it so now this segment has tags so let's uh, let's do something so I can click here on tag insertion okay and I click once in the target segment then I double click on my term here and then I can add, click again, that adds the next uh, tag, as you can see here. Now I add this, the next one and I can continue with uh, the other tags. So that's something I can do. Uh, or I can click on copy next tag sequence. OK, so that will click uh, uh, select this particular sequence here. OK, something else I can do is look up uh, the concordance. OK. So let's say I want to find translation in the translation memory. Okay, I can find here this uh, segment. 
Okay, so now that we've uh, gotten the basics of what happens when we are translating, uh, maybe we want to rearrange a bit uh, the layout and the look of uh, things in uh, MemoQ. So what we can do is uh, decide, for example, I want to um, go to view and that's the current layout we have now, but I can change that. Uh, I can click on it and uh, switch to the next layout, which will be uh, results on top. Okay, so now I have what I'm working on underneath it and I have all my results on top and I have to click here to see the view pane at the bottom. I can come back to uh, the original layout, okay. Now I can also decide I want to see uh, the, uh, the view pane bigger, so I can click here. Or I can decide to undock it. So the translating view I have, I see, is uh, I have my source on the left and my target on the right. Well, I can decide to change that and uh, do in the middle or horizontal and that brings now the translation underneath it while I'm working on it and I still have my two columns view. Now let's switch back to in the middle and one thing I can do also with uh, the view pane is uh, if I double click on it it will come out and now I can move it and if I use a secondary screen well I can bring that to my secondary screen and if I double click it comes back. Okay now let's say I want to pre-translate this file because I know I have a lot in my translation memory and that will be in our preparation tab. I can click on pre-translate and select my options there. Now something you want to do when uh, you're done with your translation of course is run quality assurance. Okay, so you can run QA and you can decide how you want to do it. Now, if you want uh, to have specific settings for your QA, you come back to Project Home, go to Settings, and in here, you come to the third icon, which is QA. As you see, uh, these have the same look as the ones we had found in the, the Gears menu here. So let's click on QA Settings. And now I see I have uh, the default setting. What's in it? Well, same here, I can't see it. So what I need to do is select clone and I will call it default two. And now I can look in it and see what's in it. So here are all my settings, okay? So if there are things you want uh, to double check or change, uh, for your QA settings, well, that's how you do it. And then, of course, you will need to make sure that your uh, new setup is selected. Now, let's close that project for a second. Click on Project Home. And I will come back to this other uh, project I had prepared earlier. And when I go into it, uh, here are my live docs and my muses. So if I click on Muses, okay, uh, here is what I did. Uh, I added one and to do that, you go and click on Create Use New and then you can select the translation memory. That will help you having the, um, the predictive typing. Regarding live docs, so here what happens is you can do the same thing, Create Use New and you will need to have a source document and a target document and you can add them and then you can uh, work on them aligning them i will link to a video that uh, explains that a little bit in the video description uh, but basically that's uh, an alignment tool now if i go back to my translations uh, let's say i'm here so if i type here i know that a few terms will be uh, in my translation memory and they should come up uh, as predictive typing as I type. So now I do have all these terms, okay, that start with PE. 
Uh, so let's say I don't do that. And now I type symptom. Okay, so that's good. And I do have immunitaire in my um, translate in my translation memory. So that's my muse working. Okay, so what you see here is my muse working. It helps me with predictive typing. All right. So that's it for this. So once you are happy with uh, your translation, well, you can now get your translated document. To do that, you go into Documents and you click on Export, Export Stored Path. So that's if you want to export this current document that you were working on, okay? When you do it like that, because it's not finished, you have to click on uh, OK here. All right, and automatically it does open the document for you, okay? And it tells you what are the warnings as well, because I have a few ones here because I didn't translate that completely. And of course, it has been exported to the default path for that uh, particular file. Now, if I want uh, to do it a little bit differently, I have to go to Project Home and now I can choose which files I will be exporting okay, from that menu and I click here on Export. Okay, so once I'm finished uh, with this, I can close the project by clicking here on this tab. That brings me back to this uh, dashboard. And here I can decide if I want, uh, I can make a right click and I can create a backup of that. And I will save that to a file or some, somewhere else. Okay, so that's something you can do and you can backup and restore from uh, that area here. Now, once you export a document, uh, that's when your master TM gets updated as well. So you have a TM that uh, uh, MemoQ will use and that is attached to a particular file and you have your master TM. So that's uh, when you export and uh, that's when you finish uh, your translation. Everything gets updated to the master TM as well. So that's it for uh, this video. I hope you uh, liked it. Uh, please feel free to leave a like and a comment. And uh, I will then start working on another CAD tool uh, for another video. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss that. See you in the next one. Bye bye.